the words that you wrote to put into the characters' mouths, the dialogue, uh, that may or may not get to the screen the way you wrote it, because actors often cut, editors cut, there'll be improvisations and whatnot. And so um, you must not mistake uh, words for writing. What you write in terms of characters, in terms of story, in terms of the events in their lives, in terms of the meaning of everything and the emotional uh, impact of, of the storytelling, um, that is 80% of writing. Dialogue and description is a relatively minor part of the creative process in the performance uh, uh, arts of television and film. And so it's just, it's overstating it and a bit of self-pitying to think that the poor screenwriter, television writer doesn't get what they wrote to the screen because their dialogue gets paraphrased. I mean, if you think that, you know, if, if somebody writing for the screen actually thinks that their greatest creative efforts is in dialogue, then they should be writing for the stage, where every single word of your dialogue, by law, has to be spoken by the actors. So it's, it's just, it just overstates it. And I'll tell you another little dirty secret about, about film and television. If you were to take a finished film 90% of the time, or a finished TV show 90% of the time, and, and transcribe a screenplay from it, and then compare that to the screenplay from which they worked, what the writer sold, okay? you see clearly that the screenplay that is finally embedded in the finished work is far better than the one they started from. And so that, in fact, the screenplay gets better and better and better as it goes through pre-production, production, and post-production. But when it does, as it does 90% of the time, the writer says nothing and just lets the world assume that that is exactly what they wrote, the way it was finally done. Okay, when there are changes that are detrimental, and that happens too, uh, then screenwriters and television writers moan and groan that they didn't shoot it the way I wrote it. But they don't moan and groan when they didn't shoot it the way I wrote it, and it's better. <laughs> okay, so you know we mustn't feel sorry for uh, film and television writers. It, they understand the reality that in fact uh, polish and revision. It's going to be edited finally, uh, that, that, that there's other artists between them and the finished product. If they, if they care about that so deeply, then they should be writing novels. The vast, vast majority of all novels written never get published. The vast, vast majority of all plays written never get performed. The vast, vast majority of paintings painted never get hung on a wall. The vast, vast majority of songs written never get sung in public. I mean, this is the nature of things, okay? And so, again, uh, that, that, that screenwriting is like everything else in the arts is a tautology. And so, yeah, of course, the vast number of every act of creativity in whatever art form never reaches the world because the vast majority of all of it is, is, is shit. <clears throat> um, and then, then there's those poor little gems of things that never... That, that, that do get buried, unfortunately, uh, and then a lot of crap gets, uh, get, does get to the world. And so it's all unfair. <laughs> Just all unfair, okay? Uh, so, uh, but the question is, does writing a screenplay that never gets uh, uh, made, is it a value? Of course, it's enormously valuable. Because, to generalize again, uh, most screenwriters, even the most talented of screenwriters, uh, their first 10 screenplays that they write never get made. Oliver Stone, uh, Lawrence Kasdan, uh, Akiva Goldsman, I mean, on and on. I can name brilliant screenwriters who are now very successful, who spent the first 10, even 15 years of their writing lives writing screenplays that nobody wanted and or novels that nobody published and so forth. And so that, that unproduced uh, screenplay or unpublished novel is enormously beneficial to the writer because you have to fail. You have to create at least uh, 10 um, unproduced, be willing at least to produce 10 unproduced major works of story art in order to master the art form, in order to grow up. I mean, just to, 
if you start writing when you're 20, I mean, I used to write when I was in college, grad school, and I had a wonderful teacher, Kenneth Rowe. Um, and I read my plays, and I looked at them, and I thought, my God, this is the work of a really immature person. But then I was immature. There was nothing I could do about that, okay? Um, and, um, and it took another 15 years of life <clears throat> to, um, when I went back to writing, to be able to write something of quality. So while you're, you're writing screenplays or novels nobody wants, you're also living, gathering insight into yourself as a human being, and all that becomes material for your future writing. And so indeed, um, in, 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 those unproduced, unpublished works are extremely important. They have to be written in order for the writer to finally achieve uh, their first success. I mean, you read about these things in the in the paper that uh, you know, 23 year old uh, writer gets first novel published or memoir probably <laughs> published uh, or first screenplay produced, um, and so th these things happen, and they are they they they're just there to annoy the really good writers who are going to take 10 years to make it. And but when they finally do, they're going to produce works of real quality. So sure. Those unproduced works are very important.